Hello, this is Paul Abrahams and I'm going to call this Learning Jazz Piano My Way and I'm calling it by this title because it's about how I learnt to play jazz piano and am still learning, how I teach jazz piano and how I came about to play jazz piano. I'm now 76 and I've been playing professionally from the age of about 20, so that must be about 50 years now. So this is going to be a combination of my musical history and how I started playing, played in bands, became a musical director, singing coach and now am teaching jazz piano. I was brought up in West Ham, Upton Park, where I still support West Ham United, and I played piano from about the age of six because my parents sent me to piano lessons. This means that I learned to read music at an early age, and I recommend that if you're learning jazz piano, you should at least learn the treble clef. In the early days, I was just playing classical music, until I came across, or my parents came across, um, what you could call a pub pianist who was teaching piano. And he started to give me tunes that were in the charts that I recognised. Um, so I was playing music by Elvis Presley. Um, I remember a piece by Floyd Kramer called On the Rebound. And lots of other tunes that I could identify with. At this time I was going to a, a youth club and I started playing with a friend of mine and we played a few standards and he seems to remember that our first gig comprised of only knowing about three tunes so we kept on playing all of me. When I started playing semi-professionally in bands I was playing what I suppose what is known as R&B in those days. And this was the first time that I realised that none of the other musicians were playing for music. We were listening to the records and learning the chords and recognising chord sequences. So you should start to recognise not just the chord symbols, in other words, major sevenths, dominant sevenths, minor sevenths, etc., but how they link together and hear how they link together. So before you even start thinking about a jazz tune, can you play Happy Birthday to You or Amazing Grace uh, without looking at music? So that's two things I'm suggesting to you. At least learn to read the treble clef music and start recognising chord symbols and how they relate to each other. I have no idea why, but throughout my junior school and secondary school years, I was listening to Ray Charles a lot and saw him every time he came over to the UK. I loved his piano playing, his singing, and had no idea whether this was jazz or not. And in fact, um, now if you listen to his repertoire, he played a lot of instrumental stuff, um, including two albums with Milt Jackson, the MJQ Vibes player, and his band were accomplished jazz musicians as well. I also listened to a lot of organ players like Jimmy Smith, Jack McDuff, Jimmy McGriff, and again, I didn't know if it was jazz or not, but listening to, for instance, Brother Jack McDuff, he was playing with George Benson, who was playing just guitar in those days. I remember in secondary school music classes, I brought one of my Ray Charles records to let the music teacher hear, and he just said, oh, that's just on one chord. And consequently, music was a disaster at school. I failed my O-level, what we call GCEs. I passed biology, history, and failed music because I had no interest in what they were teaching me. Hopefully this has changed these days. Also, when I was playing in bands in the early days, I was already playing organ 
It was a Vox Continental in those days, but then I bought a Hammond M100 organ and carted that around the country. In one of my semi-professional bands, um, we had the good fortune to play in a few of the London uh, black clubs, which I assume were mainly Jamaican. And um, so I got to listen to lots of ska and blue beat. Uh, and there were some great clubs like the All Star Club, the Q Club. And in Dalston, there was a club called the Rambling Rose, which I think changed its name to the Four Aces. And um, once I turned professional, my interest and in playing changed to more soul music, the Stax stuff like Otis Redding, Sam and Dave Wilson Pickett, Booker T and the MGs, of course, which was um, organ. And I even got to tour with Percy Sledge in the UK and in Europe. But I still wasn't being exposed to whatever real jazz is. Dave Brubeck was being played on the radio because of his hit Take 5. A British saxophone player, Johnny Dankworth, had some success, so I heard him. And for some reason, in my collection of singles, I had Hackensack by Thelonious Monk which I thought was a novelty record. I loved it, but I didn't know what it was. As far as books were concerned, there were very few books uh, that you could find about jazz, certainly on a practical level. There was a series by John McGeehan, I think his name was. And I also managed to find just one jazz piano teacher in North London called Peter Sander, who is still around and still teaching and he was very helpful. I'm going to pause there to emphasize just how important I think it is for you to play with other musicians, whether it's in a band with friends that you know, it might be a summer school, evening classes, and it doesn't matter if it's jazz or not. The important thing is to play with other people, whether it's just in your own home or even a gig, you'll learn so much more when you play together and communicate. This is the basis of improvisation, listening and responding. I'll continue with this soon, but in the meantime, if you'd like to subscribe to my Learn Jazz Piano video course, I'm on www.learnjazzpianoonline.com